Hey, Professor Candido here with another Python YouTube video. You want to come down here and type IDLE. I'm going to come into the run window. And from here, I'm going to do file, new file. And we're going to start entering some code. Notice this window is where you enter the code, not the one with this prompt. This is the code window. This is the run window. So here are some comments I have. And right now, we're going to put print left parenthesis double quote brian first code and then we're going to put it out to the screen and actually to make it grammatically correct i'm going to put an apostrophe s and we are going to run it notice with the double quotes i can put apostrophes within the code so i'm going to do file save as and i'm going to put it to my area uh, you can put anywhere you want i'm going to throw it here and I am going to call it program01, which I already have. So I'm going to um, overlay it, overwrite it, and it's going to say, okay, you probably won't get that message. And when I run it, see, that gets put out to the screen. So I'll bring up the code window so you can compare. So right here, code starts here and drops down and stops here. This is what gets put out to the screen. I can actually put this out a couple ways. I could use single quotes. The problem with single quotes is if I have a single quote, such as the apostrophe S, notice how the colorization changes because Python gets confused. So if you think you're going to have apostrophes in your um, output, don't use single quotes. Use double quotes. Another way I could write this, and I'm not saying it's the best way, is I could treat each of these words as a separate string or text. Now don't worry about putting spaces because when you use the comma separated, Python will automatically put spaces in um, the output. And another way I could write it, which achieves exactly the same thing, is this. If I get rid of the commas and I use the plus sign to concatenate or build a string, I have to Put the plus signs in. All right, let's try running it. Of course, I'm going to have to save it. And that's, well, no, I didn't want to do that. Sorry. Go back to run, run module, say OK to save it. And look, I get the same output for the most part, other than the apostrophe. And I showed you different ways to do it. I'd like to now talk about variables. So if I did this, and I know this is not an algebra class. Or a math class but I hope you know when you have an equation like this to the right of the equal sign you'll add 6 plus 3 which is 9 and then assign it to X so when you're naming variables like X that's not very meaningful so there's a couple rules in Python you have to follow in naming your variables one is the first position that's right here can be lowercase a through Z or an uppercase A through Z. You can also have an underscore. So this is a valid variable name, but it's weird, but it's okay. Notice in positions two or after, you can also have lowercase A through Z, uppercase A through Z, or the number, any number from zero to nine. So this is a variable, that's cool. This is another variable. This is also a variable. Notice I have an underscore to separate first underscore name. Now notice we have all lowercase and all uppercase. And I ask you to compare them all. This is easier to read because it's what we call camel notation. The first letter of each word is capitalized. Compare first name to all lowercase first name and all uppercase, all uppercase first name. It's my strong opinion from years of coding, this is more easily readable in your code. Each one of these, even though they look the same, is a different variable to Python. So just to recap, this is what we call a string data type. String or text it has to be enclosed within quotes. I'd also like to talk about two other data types that are pretty prevalent and popular within Python. And right here, you can see age is the number 17. And down here, tax for California is 
The difference is this is considered an integer. Integers are whole numbers, no decimal values. This is called a float because there is a decimal value. So sometimes in industry, we put a little prefix in front of our variables, such as I, age, to say I age, I being a integer. And we put an F here to say F tax for California is a float. I'm going to write out to the screen using the print the output of the type function. Type is a Python function that tells you, hey, what kind of variable is age? But wait a minute, we got a problem. I call it I age here, and here I'm calling it age. If I try running this, Python's going to give me an error that looks like this. I must save it, of course. Right here, it's saying age is not defined, and it tells you line 19. So let's go look at our code, shall we? Notice here I call it I age, here I'm calling it age. It's like my name is Professor C, but if someone called me Professor Martin, I wouldn't respond because I did not know what they were talking about. So I'm going to click here and make it I age, and to make this match this, I'm going to put an F there. I'm going to hit F5, I'm going to say OK, and look, I get written out to the screen that one is an int and one is a float. Another thing we can do is we can change the data type. So for example, I have I age, and I'm saying take 22.5, which is a float, see the 0.5, I make an integer and I sign it to I age. I'm going to put out to the screen I age, and I'm going to ask Python to tell me what kind of data is an I age. And I'm going to ask you, what do you think happens to the value 22.5 when we convert it to an integer and store it in here? Do you think Python will round it up to a 23? Or do you think it will truncate, that means chop off the 0.5 and leave it at 22? Let's run it and experiment. And as you can see, the number comes out as 22. Let's take this code and change it slightly. What do you think happens when we go the other way? What do you think happens if we take a value 22 and we convert it to a float and we put in a variable called fh? Remember, I can name the variable anything I want. Putting f in front of it doesn't make it a float. This makes it a float. I'm going to challenge you to guess what happens to 22, which is an integer, when we make it a float and put in fh. What do you think it will be written to the screen? Lock your answers in now, and let's run the code. And you should see, because we told it to make it a float, it comes across as 22.0. And the last thing I want to do in this video is I want to show you how to ask for input. Notice here, Every time I run the program, 17 is always going to be put into here, and 9.8 will be put in here. We have real no ability so far to ask the user for input. So here's another little piece of code I wrote. We're going to write out to the screen input. That's what the input fu function does. What is your name? And I'm going to put a space, a colon and a space. Then I'm going to type in an answer, and whatever I type in, and when I hit the Enter key, is transferred to here. And let's put an S in front of it to help us kind of document that the variable is a string, and we're going to put it over to here. All right. I am going to just play around with my sizing a little bit so you can see everything. All right, let's try running this code. And I'm going to make the window a little smaller so you can see how we're running it. Oh, here it is. Let me pull that up. All right, let's make this go right here. And we're going to go down. See right here, what is your name? Whatever I have in quotes here is what shows up here. Notice it's waiting for my input. And I'm going to put Professor Brian Candido. And then I'm going to hit Enter. Professor Brian Candido is going to be transferred into this S name or assigned. And when I say print your name is, it should have Professor Brian Candido. I'm going to hit the enter. And there you go. Our code worked.